thanks to the staff of the AG office, along with uh, the team at the Tobago West constituency office for organizing uh, this town hall meeting. Over the past uh, couple of years, we've been doing town hall meetings in person, but due to COVID, we have been unable to do the in-person meeting. So we decided to do um, virtual meetings via Zoom. Uh, this is our first time trying a Zoom virtual meeting from the Tobago West constituency, and we have the team here doing their very best. So um, the first topic we are going to uh, look into is the whole matter of uh, land titles and regularization for uh, Trinidad and Tobago and more specifically uh, Tobago. Uh, for the past over 10 years in my capacity as a member of parliament for Tobago West and a politician from Tobago, this matter of land titles, land adjudication, land regularization for the people of Tobago have been a major issue. And election after election, campaign after campaign, we've heard a number of promises to resolve uh, this matter. We would have known about a committee that was set up uh, in previous times with the intention of resolving the matter and lots of talk about uh, what is supposed to be done and making different strides in treating in resolving the matter. But this government has uh, gone the extra mile through the Office of the Attorney General to access funding and to set up a program or project to treat with the matter. So this afternoon, I have invited our Honorable Attorney General, Mr. Faris Alwari, my colleague, my cabinet colleague, and my dear friend. I want to thank you for taking the time out to be here this afternoon. So Faris, welcome. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister and Member of Parliament. And good afternoon to your team. Are you, are you giving me a, a, a free opening to begin? Um, let me say a, a couple more words. I want to uh, recognize our attorney Deborah Moore Miggins, who would have reached out uh, to me uh, on behalf of, of our colleagues from the Writers Guild because they are very interested in this topic. I know that Mrs. Miggins would have been interested in doing a longer, more in depth type of uh, consultation and I made the commitment to her that if we are able to cover all the areas in this first um, consultation or in this first meeting, then we would do our very best to do a, a part two. So with that said, I want to jump right into giving the floor to the Attorney General and his team. We know the different challenges that we would have experienced or we continue to experience as Tobagonians uh, with this whole land title uh, problem from being unable to go to the bank to get loans, to utilize your, um, your deed as a means of uh, getting capital to start your business and all the different parts of business and our personal development that we would have had to forego because we don't have this matter resolved. So I'm really looking forward to the AG really explaining and sharing what the Office of the Attorney General have been able to accomplish and where we're heading as it relates to, to resolving this matter for Trinidad and Tobago and more specifically for us in Tobago and the Tobago West constituency. I hope that this session does us some justice and we are motivated to do uh, many more to keep educating the people of Tobago because it's not just about going from house to house, saying hello and finding out what are the issues. It's educating our general public so that they could be a part of the decision making and understand the matters that truly affect our development. So with that said, I will give the floor, hand the floor over to you, uh, AG. Uh, take it away, thank you. Thank you very much for your warm introduction and certainly good afternoon, good evening to all of you lucky people to be in Tobago. Um, how I wish I was there with you as opposed to um, looking outside into Trinidad and Tobago's um, current climate. So let's dive directly to the, to the forum of land and let's get into the system of where we are, in what context we're operating, 
and how we can treat the improvements, when we can expect it, and what effect it will have on the lives of people in Tobago. As you know, we live on two islands. Islands are therefore demonstrative of the value of land. Our land title is our wealth, it's our ownership. It's something which we can leave to our children. We can use as security and collateral for loans. It allows us to educate ourselves, build homes. It allows us to prosper. A man's home, a woman's home is his or her castle. Tobago has been the victim of circumstance for hundreds of years. The Tobago title, which we have secured in the registry at the Attorney General's Office at the Ministry of Legal Affairs Division, the Tobago land, land title is actually contained in some very old books where we have found Queen Grants and Spanish Grants. That came about to be the case because in Tobago, there was no formal registry and therefore people had to be reliant upon an informal system of information. Land title documents and grants were very much left in the personal care and custody of our forefathers, grandmothers, grandfathers, etc. Hurricane Flora came along in 1963 and decimated a lot of our land title. And for decades, Trinidad did not see it fit to improve the technology and land administration systems. Many a government came along and flirted with the idea of reforming land registration. This flirtation began in the 1800s because there are two effective systems of law which register our titles. You can have a deed and a deed effectively is a moment in time evidencing ownership. It's a deed between Faris al Rawi and Shamfa Kujo, which says Faris owned the land and sold it to Shamfa for a particular price. That deed is registered pursuant to the Registration of Deeds Act. And anything to treat with how you create title is managed under a piece of law called the Conveyancing and Loan Property Act. That's what we call the old law system. In the late um, century in 1800s move forward, there was a system called the Torrens system. And that Torrens system came along with the idea of what we call the Rail Property Ordinance, which later became the Rail Property Act. In that act, what happens is you get a certificate of title, big sheet of paper, one is kept at the registry, one is kept in the hands of the owner or maybe even a bank, that certificate of title says who the original owner is, and then it records every transaction concerning the land. For instance, acres of land may be subdivided. It'll be on the original CT. The subdivision would then go into further dispositions. You may have a transfer from John to Jane, Jane to Doris. Doris may mortgage the bank to a bank. All of those transactions are put onto the title by way of what we call memoranda. And then that memoranda says, go and check this book and this page to see what happened. There was a lease from this person to that person. The bank released the property and gave it back. And so that Real Property Act system ran concurrently with the old law system of deeds. There was a significant shortcoming in the <laughs> Registration of Deeds Act, and that is that we did not require it to be a compulsory exercise. So people only voluntarily brought this matter into the fore, and when they voluntarily brought it forward, it's when we had the land transaction um, managed and locked and loaded into the system. What happened next was that government after government, beginning in the 1980s, moving forward, flirted with something called the land package. 
There were books created. Certainly Mrs. Mormigans will remember the blue book by Wiley, where we had a land package where we were going to have a new system of compulsory registration. And that compulsory registration reduced itself into three pieces of law and then a fourth one came along. The three pieces of law were, are the Registration of Title to Lands Act, the Land Adjudication Act, the Land Tribunal Act, and then we did some amendments to the statutory, the, the state lands position and how we look at periods of limitation for squatters' rights, adverse possession, etc., private versus state land occupation. Those laws were last amended prior to this government in the year 2000. And every time there was amendment to those laws, there was a lot of hue and cry and laws played and they said that they didn't want to move ahead until certain things were put into place. In 2018, as a result of this government's pushing to perfect a loan from the IDB, we specifically picked back up the land package program and we then went to the parliament and made some very significant amendments. Those amendments saw us bring to date those pieces of law. But very importantly, if we stick a pin for a moment, no system of registration works well unless you can operationalize it. And the operationalization came about and comes about when you have plant and machinery, people, processes, and law. So only when you have those four things together can we actually see a law come to life and work. Now, importantly, having made these amendments, the understanding of how we compel people to come under the system, once you come under the Registration of Title to Land Act, you get something called absolute title, meaning it is something which the state can guarantee as having an absolute purpose. No need to do a title search, no need to have a risk, and I say that in a qualified way, no need to have a risk of the title being bad because the state guarantees the title or ownership. The registration of deeds package, registration of title to land, land adjudication and land tribunal effectively works as follows. You get into an area, and I should tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the first area in Trinidad and Tobago where we will operationalize the system in a matter of no longer than a couple of months is going to be in Tobago. The first step is that adjudication happens. The declaration is made that an area is going to be brought under the Registration of Title to Land Act. There's a public dissemination of notice. There's a time period for it. And then all land in a particular area, let's say Bacolet, Tobago, Bacolet, Tobago, or Charlottesville, Tobago, you will have a declaration that there's going to be an order to bring lands under the Registration of Title to Land Act. Demarcation officers are deployed, those are land surveyors. And in that period when the order is there, people come forward to the land adjudicators and they say, look, I have the following pieces of paper. Here is my deed, here's my real property certificate of title. Once there are no complaints in relation to those matters, they automatically go into the land registry and form part of the registration of title to land. All real property act certificates of title, those automatically get picked up. Now we come to more reality to real Tobago issues. You have a grandfather, a grandmother, a great uncle, a great grandfather saying, I've lived on this land for 20 years. It was my parents' land. They subdivided it this way for this son, that way for this son, this way for this daughter. And people have lived for generations there and they may have no actual papers to the land. In those circumstances, a demarcation officer will come and survey the lands. A survey will be prepared. It is compared against the geographic information surveys which we have already completed for all of Trinidad and Tobago. In other words, then, we have geographical information on the whole of Trinidad and Tobago for decades. 
The demarcation officer comes, let's say three brothers live side by side. They don't have the title to their land. They do the survey and then they go through a process of whether they agree or don't agree. It is put out for public advertisement. People that disagree step up. People that don't disagree um, stay quiet. If there is any disagreement, that record is made. Well, this person has said this, that person says that. And then you take that matter to the land tribunal. And then the land tribunal will hear evidence, consider papers, and basically make a determination as to who is the owner and who is not. If you don't agree with that, you have the right of going to the court and then the court settles it. What's the good news? The good news is that that system does not cost Tobagonians or Trinidadians when they come here any money because the state does the survey, the state does the demarcation, the state sits down and does the adjudication process, the state does the tribunal process. So it is not like the registration under the Real Property Act where you have to bring lands under the Real Property Act. That is a process which involves three affidavits, survey plans, etc. And the average person would have to pay for that exercise. They would have to pay a lawyer sixty to hundred thousand dollars to go to court to bring lands under the Real Property Act. That is not going to be this case. What is the further positive side? We have secured a loan from the IDB, twenty-five million U.S. dollars. We have digitized all the land records in Trinidad and Tobago already at the registry of the Attorney General Legal Affairs Division. We have already implemented the electronic systems for this. So we launched on October 26, 2020, a system in the AG's office called the Property Business Real Estate Solution. That Property Business Real Estate Solution allows us to do all transactions electronically. No longer will somebody have to leave Tobago, come to Trinidad, hire a lawyer in Trinidad, and have to submit documentation, all of our company's documents, all of our land documents, all of our business title documents, they will all be capable of being filed electronically, therefore eliminating the need for people to travel to and fro. That system, stage one of it, is already up and running. That's the search functions. And we're about to bring the other parts of the system live in a matter of weeks. This represents a serious change in Trinidad and Tobago's fate because as we roll the project forward, what's going to happen is we're going to have an absolute title given every single person in Tobago where they will own their land. It will be properly identified. The government will pay for the process of land adjudication. It's only where you have a dispute that it goes to land adjudication and then to a land tribunal and then ultimately to a court if it needs to go there. We have already um, positioned the Ministry of Agriculture to be the line authority to advance this project. The land adjudication step is the first step that's going to happen. That land adjudication outfitting the Minister of uh, Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries takes forward that note and all things being equal, this year, 2020, as we come to the end, going into next year, is where we are going to have the full opera operationalization of this particular package. This means that decades and decades of waiting for land ownership get solved conclusively because we have the plant and machinery. What does that mean? We have the building, the legal officers working on computers. We have the property business real estate solution. We have the processes. That is the manner in which you submit electronically and otherwise. We have the people. We've hired the people to engage in a land adjudication exercise. The tribunal is about to be appointed. And then we have the law. The law is that we have passed already the Registration of Title to Land Act, the Land Adjudication Act, the Land Tribunal Act, and the amendments to the State Suits Limitation 
laws which allow us to say when squatters' rights become ownership rights in respect of private property and also in respect of state property. So that's a general, general. understanding of the position. I'd like to make myself available to answer any questions or positions that you think need clarifying. And may I therefore open the floor to your inquiries. Yes, A.G., good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your uh, very detailed and I say clear explanation. And thank you, Madam Shamfer, for organizing this, this, this explanatory session. Now, my question is about tenfold, but I'll just ask two. First of all, the, the staffing of the, um, is it the tribunal or the adjudication? Um, is it a broad-based Trinidad and Tobago, or is there any persons of Tobago on these um, bodies? That's number one. And I didn't get clear enough the distinction between the land tribunal and the adjudication. Could you just go over that little area there again that I can understand the what the adjudication does as opposed to the tribunal? Sure, thank you for your questions. So it's broad-based, it's Trinidad and Tobago. However, obviously in Tobago, we'll have more Tobagonians because the idea is that we use local talent who understand the limits, boundaries, and, and positions for that. Now, the answer to the first question is materially tied into your second question. So permit me to amplify the first answer in the answer to the second one. The land adjudication is what happens first. And really substitute the word adjudication to mean survey and confirmation. So the land adjudicators are effectively the people that are going to take a record of what they find on the ground. That adjudication involves physical surveys. It involves collecting measurements using demarcation officers. Those demarcation officers are land surveyors. And that's where the Trinidad and Tobago comes about because it's only licensed land surveyors, wherever they come from, registered in Trinidad and Tobago, that can do that. When they get a record of title, the adjudicator, meaning the surveyor, will sit under a chief adjudicator who will then receive all of the individual surveys. At that point, it's where persons come before the recording officer and will say, well, look, the, the boundaries that you set out and the markers that you did in the survey, that's really one foot into my land. That's six inches to my land. That's an acre into my land. Here is my evidence of why it is I own this side or don't own that side. People then work out what their boundaries look like if they don't have an actual document saying what the boundaries look like. And in the event that they can't agree upon that, a record of what is agreed and what is not agreed is then transmitted to the land tribunal. The land tribunal is a quasi-judicial body comprised of people appointed, similar to the industrial court and tribunals, where the Judicial and Legal Services Commission will appoint and the cabinet will appoint and the THA will be involved and appoint with bodies to receive what the adjudication officer brings forward to say, well, right, here's what we agree, what we don't agree. It's at that point that the adjudication exercise stops and is handed over to the tribunal. And then the tribunal gets to call for further information, such as affidavits, longevity, people describing, well, look, my uncle and aunt who's known this place for 60 years here or there, affidavits. They go into the land tiles, which are pictures of Trinidad and Tobago, what existed with aerial photography long before we had Google Earth, etc. Those land tiles are produced by the director of surveys, by lands division, and then the registrar general can be called upon to provide any evidence that is required. So that land adjudication is the second step in the tribunal. It's if you can't agree with the decision of the tribunal, 
that your final stage is where you go to court and say, look, we don't agree with that tribunal. They got it wrong. And that's where you invoke your rights at court. That is to turn the system in the opposite direction where it is right now. For people right now in Tobago, they are compelled to go to court to bring the lands under the Real Property Act. They spend $100,000 getting surveys, affidavits, etc., for things that they could have agreed upon themselves with historical information, etc. So it's a much more regulated process. It allows us to go area by area, inch by inch, foot by foot across Tobago until we do the entire island and certify the title. You're saying that they, whereas the adjudication team has been appointed, the land tribunal team has not as yet. Correct. So a notice coming to cabinet to cause the GLSC to deliver its nominees. So that process is underway, but it's not perfected yet because what is most critical, what was critical in getting this whole thing started was to digitize all the deeds have all the geographical information surveys from lands and surveys brought onto the system. We are to invoke and implement a computerized system, which is the property business real estate solution. We spent years bringing all of that digital information into that system. That system went live on the 26th of October, 2020. We've been testing that system for two years with members of the legal fraternity so that we could work out all of the bugs inside of the system. So that system is ready and set to go. So we actually have the tools to apply the law. Understood. Thank you. Let me leave it for someone else. Thank you. Hi, good day. Uh, I, want, I wanted a copy of a tight to deal for the land that we live on. And they said in order to get it, we needed an assessment number. So I went down to Inland Revenue to get an assessment number. And they referred me to Trinidad saying that um, the person purchased the land way back and therefore they don't have the information here in Tobago. Is that correct? Since I'm hearing that everything is digitized, do they have the information here or do I need to go to Trinidad to access that? information so brilliant question put in a nice um, example of difficulty so trinidad and tobago has been operating terribly in a system where everybody does their own thing so wasa is digitized tnc is digitized registrar general is now digitized and nobody was talking to the next person so what we did we digitized millions of deeds in our registry the Board of Inland Revenue, the Inland Revenue Division, they are also completing their exercise of digitization. Very importantly, the assessment number ties into something which died called land and building taxes and property tax. And what happened is that the return of ownership that you usually do so that you could pay for your land or your building taxes those things stopped in 2010 when the last government was in power. The last government in 2014 implemented property taxes for residential and for agricultural lands. They like to pretend that they didn't do that, but the Hansard records will demonstrate that Larry Hawaii informed the country that land and building taxes would start. When we came in as a government, we attempted to operationalize that system and the UNC immediately then went back on their position and went to court and tried to sue on it. As a result of their lawsuit, we were compelled to go step by step without having the ability to, to quicken the pace and that has therefore delayed the process. Now to answer your question, unfortunately, we still have to come to Trinidad to do the assessment number. Somebody can apply for that for you. Because until we take another step legislatively, which is to bring one unique identifying number, the system will not be perfected. However, we are right now, remember I told you we implemented stage one of the property business real estate solution. Stages two and three are about to come live and they will involve 
adding on, we have it already, but we want to launch it publicly. The GIS information, that's the geographical information lands, all of the survey maps, we have them now, and also the assessment numbers. So we are now ready to go live into that. So God willing, in the couple of months ahead, there'll be no need to come forward. We can just simply apply online, pay online, do your credit card online. All of that is available right now, by the way, because we introduced electronic payments. This ministry, the Ministry of Attorney General and Legal Affairs, we're the first ministry in the Caribbean to go live with that. So we're nearly there, but for now, you'll have to physically make the trek. Thank you. Hello, good evening. Um, I had three questions. One, one is, what is the attorney's role besides at the point of adjudication? Or is there any way that the attorney's role is invoked prior to? So let's say in the moment that your area is declared, is there a role for the attorney only or is it only at the point of adjudication? The second question is, until your area is declared, is it that deeds and the RPA would subsist? You would still be, people would still be bringing their lands under those systems until your area is declared. And if you already have an application inside, does the declaration effectively stop your application? And then the last question is, what time frame for completion is being, is, does, um, does the AG or the ministry see for Tobago to be completed? Well, you clearly have your finger on the pulse. Um, so all that I have on my screen are the words attorney at law. So um, thank you for asking three phenomenally important questions and permit me to hazard um, a, an adequate reply. So number one, there's a role for the attorney always I mean, far be it for us attorneys to put ourselves out of business. Um, we have a valuable role to do in Trinidad and Tobago. So there is a role for the attorney, both prior to and at the point of declaration. It's tied into your second question, which is what happens when the declaration for the area is made. So let's deal with number two and answer number one in the same um, vein. At the point of declaration to say Bacalet is going to fall under the Registration of Title to Lands Act, all legal transactions in Bacalet relative to land cease. They're suspended. You still put your paperwork in for your deed or your RPA, and they are recorded in the order and time in which they go, but it's a freeze period. At that declaration point where there's a suspension of the registration of activities, the lawyer has the ability to say, well, look, I will take my real property act, my RPA transaction, and I'll bring it here by the registration of title to land position. Why? Because you've already done the work. Or you can bring your old law deeds forward and say the same thing. So there's a role in stage one where the attorney can act, having acted prior, at the point of declaration of the order, you can bring those papers into the land adjudication cycle and they will be recorded. And therefore, you will let go of your old deed or your RPA transaction and just rely upon the registration of title to land act. At the point when the order is over, all of the suspension is lifted and then everything that was lined up to go into registration goes in the exact order of registration, date, time, etc., for presentation. So we don't technically disturb the title. There will be three systems of registration in place as and until the registration of title to land act is fully completed in both Tobago and Trinidad. That means you can still do your conveyances by way of old law system where you're doing deed to deed. You can still do your registration and, and land ownership under the RPA, where you're doing memoranda, etc., And you have the registration of title to land act. The time frame for completion is going to be beginning in Tobago. We're not gonna to touch Trinidad until Tobago starts. And in Tobago, 
we anticipate that it will be a process of years. Why? Because obviously people are very sensitive about their six inches of land or two acres of land and boundary disputes, etc. So it will firstly involve all RPA will immediately get soaked into the system and they're free to go. Deeds would then come next into the system, the old law, and they'd be free to go. The demarcation exercise for lands that are not complicated, where there's no dispute on the boundaries, they would kick in next. And then where you have a boundary dispute, a title dispute, they would come in after that. And then the very last one will be where people are on state land and they are squatting and they want to take adverse possession in what they would normally have done in bringing lands under the RPO, under the RPA, they'll be able to bring that under the Registration of Title to Lands Act. So they all work in tandem. Um, I hope I've answered your three questions, but not as clearly as one can expect. The, uh, there's an interrelation between all three. Thank, thank you kindly. And, and that clears up a uh, significant amount of the questions I had. Thank you. Sure. May I jump in and ask two more, sir? Uh, would the loss grant process still be as contorted and as it is now when assuming you lost your certificate of title? Is there a simpler procedure by which you can get it back? That's number one. Number two, uh, I'm the member of a church that has a parliamentary act of parliament that brought all the lands owned by it under that act. It is specified all the lands are owned by it. Mr. Attorney General, can a bank refuse to do a mortgage on those lands because there isn't a deed? And number three, if you mind, if you'd allow me, we in Tobago are kind of concerned at the, the property, um, the new property tax, because of the problems with our land titles. We feel that until the land title situation is cleared up, where we can use our land to generate the income we need, that we shouldn't be assessed to the new system because we are on a handicap with our, our defective title lands. How do you see that? I've knocked him off. No, 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 I'm, I'm right here. I see. Um, sorry, my, my host, Shamfa, had muted me. Um, <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Three excellent questions. Will the loss grant process still be complicated or will it be simplified? It'll be dramatically simplified. Why? It's all electronic. I want you for one moment to, to picture what I'm about to see. This property business real estate solution, which is the electronic platform that we're working on, here's how it's going to work. Deborah Moore Miggins will have a registered portal into the Registrar General's office. She, as an attorney at law, will sign up, be registered, submit her documents. Clerks in her office will be registered as well. You'll have a unique identifier. Your email address, your phone number, etc., will all be done. Your forms of ID, you'll be FIU registered, so you are a user on the system. You'll be able to do all of your usual paperwork, your what we call wet signature papers, you know, where you sign with a pen and the signature is wet. Those are anti fraud mechanisms. You'll be able to do all of that in your office, and then you'll be able to scan it, submit it online and have it registered instantaneously at that point, because you're going to put a statutory declaration to say um, that this is completed, it's a true copy, etc. And then you will drop your hard copy in by TT Post or in a drop box. That hard copy will come with a statutory declaration, which will say, I, Deborah Moore Miggins, swear that what I submitted with this receipt number, which is attached, is the same thing as this hard copy that I'm now sending in. Because the PBRS system will have a full electronic copy, we will therefore be able to issue a lost grant electronically. 
The same way we go to court right now and your court documents are stamped electronically and they're watermarked and verified and true, the same way we'll be able to do this with our deeds, etc. So we have already developed the system of electronic issuance of documentation. If you want a certified copy of that electronic copy, you can get a certified electronic copy and a certified hard copy. And those certified hard copies are actually limited in time. Meaning, because of fraud mechanisms and scanning and replication, that certified copy of a deed may last you six months or a year, depending upon where you go. So we built in a whole layer of anti-fraud technology and ease of doing business so that the whole issue of lost grants becomes a matter of a click of a mouse, a swipe of a credit card, and data verification, two-step verification. You get a message on your phone saying somebody using your ID, and you get an email saying somebody's using your ID. So you know who is messing and pretending to be Deborah Moore Miggins. Right now, anybody could roll up and say, I'm Deborah Moore Miggins' clerk, and I came to register a deed, and there's impersonation and fraud, etc. So we've managed all of those things inside of this new system. With respect to the vesting order and the act of parliament, that's an unusual situation. Lands which are vested by act of parliament stand by way of vesting order. So Petrotrin lands were done by way of vesting order. And when you're dealing with Petrotrin lands or Carney lands, the vesting order stands. The situation of the bank refusing to take the, that which was vested by way of act of parliament is rather peculiar. If I had some more particulars on that, perhaps I could advise with better precision. But in the same way that we make a recital for the vesting of lands um, by way of an act of parliament is the same way you ought to be able to treat with that. And I would think that there's a way to treat with it. With respect to property tax, property tax, as it is proposed to be ruled out, depends upon evidence of ownership. It's true that occupants also pay property tax, meaning people who are squatters. But the fact is the property tax as it is ruled out is a very nominal tax. Let me give you an example of how nominal it is. Because it is done on an annual rental value, which is an assumed value. They don't say what you're actually renting the land for. It's an assumed value. They will take a mansion and say that the person who has mansion salary is, for example, the president or the prime minister. And their housing allowance is $12,000 a month. That means it's $144,000 a year. You would take away 10%, which is $14,400 from that value. And you would then take 3% of that 144,000 minus 14,000. And then you divide it by 12. So somebody at the rank and level of the office of the prime minister will be paying at highest $400 in property tax a month. The average person who is probably going to pay anywhere between $60 and $100 per month. We are actually looking at some formula right now, formulae, that the Minister of Finance is considering where we'll standardize property taxes. If your value is under a million dollars in house, X tax, under five, two million, four million, five million, Y tax, where you standardize your rates so that it will not become a shock on the system for people in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. So I want you to be assured, number one, Property taxes roll out on the back of ownership, and obviously we're attending to fixing ownership. Number two, the default position is a simplified version of property tax, and the property tax is going to be a nominal arrangement. That property tax is probably less than people spend on their phone bill per month. Um, but it also, in the THA model, allows for that revenue to go right back to the THA so that they can deal with roads, drains, cleaning, schools, repairs, etc. Because in this COVID pandemic, there'll be a national discussion on how we ought to collect revenue and what it should be used for. So it's not yet on the table. There's a distance away to go on property tax. 
but I don't want you to be afraid of property tax. It's intended to be a very measured system after consultation. Certainly the cabinet is yet to take a decision on the precision of what property tax looks like. All right, I hear you. Um, um, I, I, it's just that you're saying that you, you're fixing ownership. So my question was, until ownership is fixed. How do you assess without because, knowing phones? I got you. Yeah, because you see many of our people here build guest houses by just adding on one room by sacrifice and dint of hard work every year. And now they have mansion type buildings like your prime minister even bigger. But the titles to that land is so problematic. They couldn't go to the bank if they wanted to get a loan on it. So that, it was against that background that I am concerned about the, the, um, the levying of the tax and how are these people going to meet, especially even in the tourist industry that right now is, is at, a, you know, as a, at a lull. So perfectly understood. We are not near property tax right now. Um, there's, there, there's a way to go, but obviously as a responsible society, we have to contemplate what's ahead of us in the future. Thank so, you, HD. I understand. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. We have been discussing the PBRS system, which I have had the privilege to start using after it has been launched. I understand it's still in these testing stages and you know it's been going okay so far. It has the ability to file, as you would have explained, or register um, new deeds or any title. Um, what about the stamp duty aspect of registration of a deed? Um, is there any plans to have that also um, digitized? And when can we expect digitization of the assessment aspect? Because someone asked earlier, I heard him also mention um, not needing title searches, essentially, but oftentimes the record of the Registrar General's Department, you have to rely on the records at the assessment office. So is there plans to digitize um, first the stamp duty system as well as um, at the warden offices, what is the plan regarding that? Excellent point. So yes, we are in the middle of digitizing the stamp duty positions right now so that you'd be able to physically pay online, have the stamp duty embossed electronically, and then the hard copies will go as well. Right now, the real dilemma is wet signature versus electronic signature because Anti-fraud tells you, you still want to see the pen stroke to be able to analyze whether the person was there. Remember, we still require a commissioner of affidavits. We require the attorney at law, the witnesses present to make sure that it's being done right. So we're not abandoning those processes. But the answer is, yes, we are digitizing the assessment and stamp duty aspects. That's a work product that's going on as we speak. And we're very far ahead of that. The warden's office is also being merged the whole assessment aspect of it is being data pooled at the same time. I want you to stick a pin for a moment. Picture this. You're talking to an attorney general who is telling you about what has started. Mrs. Moore Miggins will tell you Trinidad and Tobago, Tobago and Trinidad. We've been talking about this for centuries and decades. We're now in the realm where this government going to court electronically, no big deal. Filing electronically, no big deal. Paying electronically, no big deal. But when I passed that law in 2016 and 2018, people told me that will never happen. And they're all happening right now, not because of COVID, but because we passed that law in 2016, 2018. We did the Registration of Title to Land Act in 2018. We did the digitization beginning in 2015. We shut down the old registry at South Key. We moved millions of records, literally 5 million records across to this new building 
and we were digitizing all the while. You see, what we simply say in this government is just start. Don't get into analysis paralysis, talk, 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 wait for the perfect, the perfect answer because perfection is the enemy of progress sometimes. So we are in the middle of AG took the lead, RG took the lead, Board of Inland Revenue is right alongside us. They're a little step behind, but right now they're all cutting and pasting what we did in the Registrar General's office. Every division, you realize you could pay your tickets online, you can go to court online, you gain demerit points online. We're about, TT Post is now alive and well because passports come by way of online applications and delivery. So we're making significant progress right now. Any okay. Yeah. I want to I want to thank you, um, AG. I want to thank everyone who would have participated. Um, I want to get ready to wrap up this session. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody with any question, any burning question you want to ask before we wrap up? Please, um, it's our intention to have one of these sessions once per month, every fourth Monday. We are going to do a town hall meeting on a different topic. So um, if we have to do a part two of this, we certainly can sometime uh, soon. But for today's session, I want to get ready to wrap it up. And uh, Anybody have any more questions, please ask. Going once. Yes, please, we'll appreciate the part two, if possible. We'd be, we'd be very happy for a part two because now your MP has given me the opportunity to get her into a San Fernando Zoom meeting as well. <laughs> and, um, we're going to be very happy because we have a lot going on on our plate that my colleague will, will help me with. Yes. My absolute pleasure. I would love to do that. At the end of the day, it's about representing people and uh, ensuring that we remain responsible as a government and you remain responsible as citizens, staying informed about what's taking place and what affects your development. Uh, for everybody who uh, have tuned in today, I want to thank you sincerely. If you have any topics that you would like for us to cover in a, a future session, remember it's going to be every Fourth Monday, we are going to do a town hall meeting, and every first Tuesday, we continue to do roving where we take the constituency office to a different uh, community. And as it relates to this virtual session, please uh, you can send to our Facebook page or you can call the office at 639 If there's a topic that you want us to cover, anything topical in Tobago. Just feel free to contact us and let us know. To the AG, or Honorable Attorney General, I want to thank you for taking the time out to participate today. Um, you have been very excited when I handed you the letter two weeks ago. And I'm um, glad you actually came on board and decided to participate. To uh, Mrs. Moore Miggins, thank you very much for uh, directing and guiding me along uh, this path. And any other topics you guys want to throw in here, please be sure to let me know to the media. We saw members of the media who would have logged in today. I want to thank you for logging in people from far and wide across Tobago West, Tobago East. And we have some people from Trinidad also who tuned in. Thank you very much for your support. And uh, we look forward to many more of these types of uh, initiatives and programs to help to educate uh, our people. People, so you can be a part of the decision-making process and have your voices heard. So from all of us here in the Tobago West constituency office, all of uh, Tobago West, I want to thank you sincerely. Thanks again, AG. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one. Most welcome. Take care, Tobago. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.